everybody. Welcome to the Hallmark Youth Podcast. We are so excited today. Uh, I'm Rachel and I'm here to do a special interview with uh, the mom of one of our favorite Hallmark shows, uh, Jessica Shores. We're here to talk to Barbara Niven. This is so cool. Barbara, thank you. I am so grateful to be here and we owe it all to you Hallmarkies and all the Chessies. Yes. Um, my gosh, it, without you guys watching, um, not only would it not come full circle, but we wouldn't get to do what we love. So we are in such gratitude. We are so blessed by all of you. Well, thank you. It's a really special group of fans, the, the Hallmarkies. And mm -hmm. it's, it's so interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Disney fan. So I'm really, <laughs> involved, I'm really involved in that fandom. And uh, there's just something about the, the, the Hallmark fans. I love Star Wars, too. There's, I, so I'm in a lot of different fandoms. But there's something about the Hallmark fans that they just love it. They, they don't, I, sometimes I feel like some of the other fandoms, they don't get a lot of joy out of it. And the great thing about the Hallmark fans is they just get joy out of it. <laughs> right. Because, because well, I, think, I think one of the um, reasons that I love working with Hallmark so much is that we're putting out good energy. Hallmark and, and the people that work at Hallmark are the same way. They're the same heart centered kind of people. Mm -hmm. And especially in this world right now, I want to be part of the solution of putting out good, positive energy. Yeah. And part of the, what, what I do um, when I, when I shoot Chesapeake or when I shoot anything, but especially Chesapeake, because we go through some more emotional uh, relationship issues. Um, I always, and it sounds corny, but I, I say a prayer that, when people see this, they're not going to just watch the words or watch the beautiful scenery or, mm -hmm. or just watch what people are doing, but they're going to find, they're going to be touching their heart. They're going to find something that they can use in their own life to, to reach out to, uh, to help heal a wound yeah. or maybe help another person or something. Hallmark is just inspirational. And, and I think it, it teaches us all something that we, that we need to be reminded of to put out kindness and compassion back yeah. into the world and, and for ourselves as well. Yeah. And it's so refreshing too, to, uh, I don't know, to have a company, like if I'm going to devote most of my time to something, it's really refreshing to have a company that uh, is so pro pro women, pro uh, family. Uh, it just makes me feel good. Like I remember uh, last year, Ashley uh, Williams, she said, that um i love her <laughs> yeah on your on your guys's movie that she yeah. was able to feed her baby and have her baby on set and, ah. and feed her baby in between takes i'm like that's the kind of company that i want to support absolutely so uh, so actually i took a picture but i didn't share it because it's private but sure. um we're, we're on set and we're shooting uh one of the the scenes in a bedroom and um, and I just loved working with her. She is so down to earth. Who you who you see on screen is exactly who Ashley is. Uh -huh. And 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 being a mom is the most important thing for me too. So here she is trying to memorize lines. We're running lines, and she's got Gus breastfeeding, and then and then somebody's doing her makeup and touching up her hair, and that's just, that's just how it was. Yeah, it's just real. It's just real life. That's you know? so cool. That's great. Yeah. Well, you have done, you've had an amazing career. And so what we, we like to do is ask our interviewees to, uh, to introduce yourself and uh, to okay. let us know what inspired you to get into acting. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, I have actually been acting over 30 years now. Um, and I didn't start right away. I'm a late bloomer, so I'm a very unlikely winner. And I am proof that whatever crazy dream you might have, you can make it happen. Because if I can make this, this dream happen, I mean, anything is possible. So I remember I always wanted to be an actress. I remember being five years old. And I remember exactly the first time I ever acted, I was five and it was our Christmas program. I remember exactly what I was wearing with of bitty pajamas and I was holding oh. teddy bear and we were saying me and my teddy bear have no worries have no care and 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 I remember what it felt like to be in front of an audience and I got goosebumps uh -huh. and to this day I still get goosebumps so what I want people to really think about 
you know, a lot of people ask me, how do you know what your passion is? How do you know what your dream is? You got to follow your goosebumps. Mm. Don't play it safe. And if you're getting goosebumps, something's happening inside you. And it's, it, it's all your red lights going off and saying, yes, pick me, pick me. So you have to explore your goosebumps. Yeah. But I didn't until I was almost 30 years old mm. because at through high school and, and then I got married right afterwards and end up having a baby and um and just put all those dreams aside because they weren't practical i didn't have any role models i didn't think that could really happen and so i just became everybody else's dream of me but my own but close to my 10-year high school reunion they send out an application that said that you're supposed to fill out so that you can you know get be put into the uh, the, into the book, and it said a few questions on it. The normal ones, like, who did you marry? Where do you live? How many kids did you have? And the last one on that page was, have you achieved all you thought you would in your life by now? Ten years had gone by. I hadn't done one thing towards my dream, yet I still knew I was going to make it happen. So mm -hmm. that was the day I declared myself. And uh, I found a way. I, I was just going through a divorce then as well. Okay. And so I was a single mother. So a lot like Megan on Chesapeake Shore, single mother. Um, and I didn't take child support. I didn't take the car. I didn't take that house because I was in um, a relationship with a, a big personality, you know, mm -hmm. very like Mick O'Brien. <laughs> and so there, we have a lot in common, Megan O'Brien and I. Oh, interesting. And, and so, so I can really identify with her and that's why I really want to do her justice and make her um, people understand her story because when she left it wasn't just a selfish like I got to go try this other thing in my life she wanted to do the right thing for her kids so I'll tell you more about that later yeah, I but definitely want to ask what, you about that yeah because so what I did after the 10-year high school reunion my aha moment I found somebody um, to start giving me some voice lessons. I found, um, I went down in Powell's bookstore because I'm from Portland, Oregon, best bookstore ever in the whole world. <laughs> and that's like a, one whole square block. And they had this incredible um, used book section. So I bought every used book on acting and I just went to town. I, I memorized a monologue um, from a, a movie and then a play uh, by Neil Simon called Chapter Two. And I memorized that thing and because I, I, and I just knew I could do this. And then all of a sudden there was um, a big thing. Do you remember One Life to Live? And there was a mm -hmm. character named Tina. And mm -hmm. 20 years later, I actually did get a part on One Life to Live. But then they advertised, they were doing a national search for Tina. And so I, and they were going to do it up in Seattle. And so I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell one person in the whole world that I am. I'm an actor. I've been memorizing this. So I, and on the day of that audition in Seattle, and I, here I live in Portland, Oregon. It's like a three and a half hour drive on a good day. Um, it, there was a black ice storm out. So nobody was driving, nobody was flying, but I took Jessica, my, my little daughter, over to my mom's house and said, I'll pick her up later, mom, you know, at the end of the day. And I drove through that black ice storm up to Seattle, and that was the first time I'd ever acted in front of anybody. Um, it was with Bobby Hoffman, who was the head of ABC Daytime Casting for One Life to Live, and I got put on videotape. And it was the first time out of my mouth, um, and I had gone, I'd parked the car, and I remember changing my clothes in the car, and then going out and just doing it, and, and saying it and it feeling really good and then going back into my car, driving all the way three and a half hours back to Portland to pick up my daughter and still never telling anybody. Well, guess what? I was one of seven people they sent back to New York for a screen test oh my for that part. But of course I hadn't studied. I didn't know my craft yet because you have to, it can't just be about a dream. It just can't be about what you right. want. You mm -hmm. got to put the work in as well. Right. And, and if you love what you do, it's not work. You're excited about it every single day and everything that you learn and you're with people who are doing the same thing that are excited about it as well. So I did that. I, I bombed back there and she said, Oh honey, I don't see any star power in you. And she also said, honey, with that voice, all you're ever going to do is play a victim. And because 
I talked like this. My name was Barbie. Everybody called me Barbie then, and I was cute little blonde. And 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 she was right because I didn't see myself as being powerful. Uh huh. So confident. that could that could have even her her telling me that no star power, terrible voice could have either, either turned me completely off of it or it kicked me the fighter in me yeah. in. So I found an old radio guy when I came back to Portland and said, I'm going to make this. And I, he worked with me on my voice. And, you know, I teach media training now. I have a, a company called Unleash Your Star Power. Uh -huh. and I have a complete media training course. And one of the things in there is on voice because especially women, we don't own our voices. Mm -hmm. But it's really easy to try at, to, to use them as an instrument to develop. And so um, he taught me this. And it's one thing that I teach everybody that comes to my, my courses, um, to do one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, four. And actually see, I, I can keep my voice down here now. And, and without a microphone, I can reach the rafters anywhere, mm. but it's just a matter of learning where to place your voice. And as an actress, it's ideal because I can play a character here or down maybe in my chest or actually all the way low. Like if I'm playing a bitch on Lifetime, right? Yeah. You know? Or a powerful, if I'm talking, to, doing a speech to CEOs, the voice is down here more. Huh. So it's all tools that actors learn that, that, we can, that we can learn. So the next time when I got another opportunity, I was ready. They had a, um, I got my SAG card actually on a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie. So I started in Hallmark on the Hallmark Hall of Fame with James Garner, James Woods, and Piper Laurie in a movie of the week that won the Emmy that year called Promise. And now I'm back mm -hmm. on Hallmark yeah. again. So I am truly grateful. Hallmark has been the start and the complete circle of my career. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I see that here. The, the, the Promise. Yeah. Huh. That looks pretty good. And it still, and it still plays. It's, it's excellent. And I learned yeah. so much from working with those actors of, of that caliber, you know, about how to give. It's not about being a selfish diva at all. Actors support each other. So we, mm -hmm. we do better together than we can apart. Yeah. And that's what I always tell new actors, too, on the set, that you need to try everybody else's job on that set so you realize it's not about you, honey. It's about making everybody better because when everybody's better, we raise that the energy, we raise the atmosphere, and we all create magic together. Yeah. And I've done, I've done, I have not run the camera. There's no way I can, I could do that stuff for the lighting. I'm just not good at it. But I have done pretty much every other job. The two worst jobs on the set, craft services, because that's <laughs> that's where everybody goes to, to for snacks, right? And so. Yeah. The, the person lays it all out there and everybody just comes and devours it and leaves a mess and doesn't even say thank you. Hello. Right. And then, but the worst one is the boom mic operator. So um, that's the guy who has to hold his arms up high and hold this long boom microphone out of the shot. If he bobble, foibles at all or wobbles or anything and goes back into the shot, we have to do completely do it over. Um, but that's how... That's how Every single job on the set is if one person fails, take two, you yeah. know? So it doesn't matter if you get your best scene on it. It's just a complete team effort. And, and that's why Chesapeake Shores, the cast and crew have gotten so close because this was our third year that working together, third season. And the, everybody is like family. We're, we're a shoot, shoot on Vancouver Island. And so we're all a little marooned there. And all we have is each other. So it's, it's, a, it's a blessing, really, because I think it shows in the work that how close that we all get and we support each other. Yeah, no, I think that's really good. I, I, I know for, for, for a while in the one of the, in Chesapeake Shores, one of the storylines I related to the most was Connor's storyline. And, uh -huh. and I, because I had a time in my life where I was so unhappy in my job. And, uh, and the 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 main reason was because i had this manager who was just the worst <laughs> and mm. was extremely critical of everything that i did and i'm not saying i was perfect but it was a very toxic work environment and uh you know it's just like it drains 
everything from you because it's such a big part of your day and and it and it was just brutal and you know i finally i i you know i finally had to leave that situation i should have left it a lot sooner uh but you know there was one woman at this office uh, her name was sandy and she was my i don't know she was my saving grace like uh, she when like i would just invent the most ridiculous reasons that i had to go in there and talk to her and i probably i mean in retrospect it was probably like not the greatest thing in the world to have to deal with like boost you know because i'm sure she was having a bad day some days too but uh but she was always ready to boost me up and uh i, I never ever got the sense of like, I have other stuff to do, Rachel. You know, I never got that, that feeling. And, and uh, I'd always be grateful to her. And, <laughs> and you pay it forward. Look at how, look at what yeah. you do now. That's the kind of person you are. So that's what I always say is uh, to anybody starting anything new is to find a mentor. Yeah. And then to almost anybody, almost everybody will say yes. If you also add this at the end of that, will you be my mentor, please? And then I promise to pay it forward when I reach my own success. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you're doing now. Yeah. I always will be grateful. She was very, very unselfish. And so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, the dynamics of whatever we do for our, our career, uh, I think it's, it's an interesting situation. It's an interesting dynamic. And, and uh, so that's really cool. That's really interesting. I like that. And so, all right, well, uh, so you had, I guess, your first movie was the Hall of Fame movie then. Yeah, but that's when I got my first SAG movie. I'd done a few indie movies, like okay. we called guerrilla filmmaking, where sometimes I would carry the equipment. We wouldn't have a permit to shoot. Oh and so we'd, <laughs> we'd set everything down. I'd get in front of the camera, and we'd shoot it, and then we'd run like heck <laughs> before we got discovered. Did you, uh, did you love movies? Were you a big, like, what, it, what was the, what inspired you to... Uh, were you somebody who watched a lot of movies growing up or yes uh, yes yeah. and I still do I love black and white movies I love um one of the actresses that I love so much is Gloria Graham oh, and I yeah. just I just saw they just did a movie with Annette Benning and um Jamie I forget his his name he's British but that uh film stars don't die in Liverpool yeah and it was it was amazing because it was about Gloria Graham yeah. And, and I learned a lot that I didn't know about her. I haven't you know, seen that movie, but I know she had a crazy life. She had a crazy yeah, life. Really unusual yeah. life. Yeah. That, that Benning did, did a great job with her. Mm, um, cool. I guess. So what's, inter what's so interesting to me is that um, every character that you see on camera or in a movie or that I play as an actress we all have such a through line. We're all so much more alike as human beings than we are different. So getting the opportunity to play different characters like, like Meg Megan O'Brien or mm -hmm. Dolores and Murder, She Baked or uh, some of the, the really serious characters. Oh, well, like I got to play Marilyn Monroe in The Rat Back. And mm. there, as you explore characters as an actress, you have to unearth things that are similar there that, elicit the same emotions that you've gone through in your own life. Those are your, I call them the, your tools in your tool belt that you will use for this particular character, or maybe in that scene, or maybe just in that one flash of a moment in that scene. Mm. So um, it's just fascinating to, to build the psyche of, yeah. of a character from the inside out. And then also from the outside in, because mm -hmm. I, I do both. I have to um, find the, the right wardrobe, the right, um, even, to putting the makeup on to the right, like different characters have different arches to their eyebrows for me. And oh, one it's, little it's... difference just makes everything different. Mm -hmm. I love it. I just yeah. love, I'm fascinated by it. I've not lost a fascination after over 30 years. That is so cool. That uh... it, It's great. Now I'll tell you, gravity sucks. Watching yourself age on camera, <laughs> especially in HD now in a close-up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just—it's just—it's brutal. It's torture. But but thank God for Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> if, if anybody doesn't know what Spanx are, this is a modern-day girdle, and I've been known to wear two at once on the red carpet because you never know. And um and but but thank goodness I I just I, I love having a career now where I can 
just portrayed characters and real women. And it, and I never stop learning because every character I play teaches me something new as well. Mm -hmm. Megan is te has taught me to be more persistent and maybe to, um, to forgive more. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's really strong. And I think people will be very, very interested to see mm -hmm. her journey along with the rest of the journey this season. The, um, we go a lot deeper into relationships and into feelings. We're stretching the envelope a bit for Hallmark. And I, I think that the mm -hmm. fans are going to appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm no, really. I mean, I, I love, I love watching Hallmark, like the Christmas movies. You know, you're going to have two hours, and you're going to feel great. Sure. But it's not always like that. Um, yeah. I, I, I love the fact that we are going to be going deeper and um, showing what the effect of Megan leaving did to each person and how it affects moments in their lives still today. Everybody's affected differently. And uh, you'll see they figured a very clever way to bring that all up for this entire season. So I think mm -hmm. people are gonna be- um, Well, I, as I, long as nobody nobody major dies, like that's <laughs> my, you know, after when calls oh, the heart. Like, I know, that, that was we're devastating. We're all still recovering and- I know, <laughs> I know, that was devastating, I know. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I'm a hearty as well. I was like, I think that, that When Calls the Heart ruined television for me because now I'm always like, oh no, <laughs> somebody going to die? <laughs> I know. Like, I can never go watch a movie. If an animal movie, I have to ask them first, did the dog die? Because I won't go see it. I can't, I can't get over it. There's a whole website. You, the, the, it's like, um, does the dog die.com or something like that. Do we? Yeah, where you can look up. It has all the. <laughs> Oh, wow, know. because because <laughs> Charles Port Portlier, um, who does uh, is the head makeup guy on Chesapeake Shores, um, he was telling me he did, there's one called Alpha, Alpha Dog, or Alpha, it's about a wolf that's out yeah, right yeah, yeah, now, yeah. And, and I was saying, okay, Charles, I want to go see your work, it sounds great, but does he die in there? And he says, I don't know. All he would say was, I don't know. So I'm, I'm assuming that's not one I'm going to see, but maybe I can go look it up there. Yeah, look it up there. That's yeah. Funny. Because I, <laughs> I was thinking that your first Hallmark movie was the Back to You and Me, uh, oh. but I guess it wasn't. Uh, but what was the you were well, in that Hallmark, one? Hallmark Hall of Fame is different than than Hallmark. Right, right, right. That one was Hallmark. Was that Hall, that right. was Hall of Fame? Yeah, that was Hall of Fame. Yeah, Hallmark. Um, so then I did um, I did one before Back to You and Me. It was uh, a Carol Christmas. Is that the one with Tori Spelling? Oh, all yeah. I did was, all I did was play, uh, oh, and Wedding Days might have been first too. They've had me on a lot. And then the first time I played with Bruce Boxleitner ever was, um, was the uh, mystery woman, Wild West Mystery, where we both, because we both love horses oh, yeah. and we'd always get there. We got to dress up in cowboy clothes. So we'd always get to work early and get our clothes on and then go hang out with the, the Wranglers, the horses. Yeah. Really fun. So I'm a huge Golden Girls fan though. So did you get to meet, um, uh, yes, Rue McClanahan. Yes. Oh my gosh. Best job ever. <laughs> because we both stayed at the same little B&B. &B, uh -huh. And then we would, we would go, like we'd do all this stuff and we'd go have wine and dinner. And she would tell me all the stories about the Golden Girls. How that, um, how Betty White and uh, Rue, they were supposed to have the opposite roles, but Betty didn't want it. So she, right. they, isn't that crazy? Yeah. It yeah. Is. And she told me a lot. She was, just a great broad huge oh, part just a great broad because uh, her part in mod was i uh, was more of the 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 dumb uh blonde naive character oh, i don't remember her in mod and that her her and and of course betty white's part in mary tyler moore yes. was yes. sue ann nivens who was more uh more of a Sex pot. Yeah, sex pot kind of character. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why I think that's why they were originally thinking they would be, and then it turned out the way it did. And so we actually just uh, posted this week our, uh, uh, our we just recently posted our podcast on the Golden Girls where me and, oh. my, friend, yeah, <laughs> me and my friend Larry, we, we go over all of our favorite episodes and I, I just love the show. I think it's so funny I, and so brave. It's so I brave. watch it too. So I watch Golden Girls. So, and Frasier and I love Lucy. Can you tell I can't sleep? Yeah. It's all, it's all on late night, but I watch it all the time. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. And then uh, you did uh, Cedar Cove. Yep. Yep. That, uh, was, that was fun. We did three seasons of Cedar Cove. Mm -hmm. um, and Andy McDowell, what a love she is. And Terrell Rothery. Yeah. Who played Grace in that. And surprise, you're going to you're going to have a Terrell surprise this season. <laughs> Oh, to make shores. So uh, get ready, get ready for Terrell. Uh -huh. so, and, and we are, we are such good friends off camera. She, um, she uh, and her daughter London have come to stay with me um, uh, now twice now up in Vancouver Island. And then uh, Terrell just came down for the recent Hallmark TCAs, which is that oh, yeah, the big yeah. press event that they have. And then she spent an extra day and came and stayed at my house. I just, I love her. She's, Oh my gosh, she's not only smart and such a good actor, but she's really spiritual too. So she, um, oh neat. She and I go uh, find crystals together. We go crystal shopping, and her daughter too. And I, I just, oh, I love her. Like love what her. kind of crystals? Um, well, see, Vancouver Island. Part of the magic of Chesapeake Shores, I think, is because it's actually shot on the island. And I've been told that there's a layer of crystals down underneath the earth on the island like a whole layer of that a whole bed of crystals and and so when you go to vancouver island i don't know if you've ever been to sedona uh -huh. but it has that same feeling that same energy that it's so present and it's just magical it's like god is hugging you it's like you see things and it's like i guess if that because i don't do drugs but it's almost like everything yeah. is clearer everything is more colorful you look at the clouds and and it's just you're just so much more present and that's that's what uh chesapeake shores um brings to it as well so that energy there like when you look out from chesapeake shores and like off the o'brien house uh -huh. uh, like we had uh, we had the last day that we were filming there we had a pot of whales come in right off there yeah um, and that, that's the kind of thing that's the kind of magic that's on chesapeake shores on Vancouver Island. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. I love nothing more than the ocean. Like I just love being by the ocean. I don't know why I live in Utah sometimes because I love being by the ocean so much. You really should and um, just make it, make, put it on your bucket list, yeah. um, but do it sooner than later to go okay. up to Vancouver Island because fun. Um, it's, it's extraordinary. And we actually had a lot of people come through this year who uh, wanted to see Sally's and who wanted to see other places. And uh -huh. a lot of times in our hotel, um, we would, um, even when I'm, when I'm off and not wearing makeup, they go, Oh, you're, you're, you're Megan. You're, you know, oh, so really? and it was this, yeah. So it's just like a big family and nobody's a diva. So it, it was just really cool. And it's, it's great to be able to share our magical place with other people. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, well, real quick, I just wanted to ask about, uh, before we go into Chesapeake Shores, I really wanted, I wanted to ask about Christmas Detour. I was, yes. that's one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, from uh -huh. And I was just wondering, was that really fun to play sort of the... Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's always, it's always fun. Can I say bitch? Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. It's always fun to play those kind of characters. Yeah. Um, and um, yes. It, yeah, it, it's really fun. Again, and I put her voice down here more too. Oh, so interesting. It's, okay. It's more tight. And um, I used um, uh, the clenched lips. Um, I, I've seen women who are not real happy. They just, they clench everything. So just clench the lips and the t kind of a tight mouth. You know, it's just, it's just, it's fun to create a new character. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like it would be really fun. And Candace Cameron Bure is such a doll. Oh my gosh, I played with her in Miss Moonlight and Mistletoe too. Oh and, yeah, and she's she's just a doll. And we all use FaceTime to to be with our kids because the hardest thing about what we do, we love what we do, but the hardest thing is not to be able to go home at night. Right. It's to be with our, our around our things and with our yummy kids and your animals and that that's the hardest thing about what I do. Yeah, that would be really difficult. Cameron, Cameron Matheson taught me something, though. Uh -huh. um, for anybody out there who's listening and who travels a lot or can't be with your kids for whatever reason, um, he taught me to do FaceTime, but to just, uh, it's like a long version of FaceTime um, so that you don't, you're not stiffly saying, hi, dad, how are you? How are you, honey? Show me this right. and then goodbye. 
Um, but you just set the phone up on FaceTime and then you just go about your business. So Cameron, um, one time when we were shooting in Vancouver, um, his hotel door was right across the hall from mine and I heard kids' voices there go and I said, I, I knocked and I said, Cameron, are your kids here? Let me, let me meet them. And he goes, no, we're doing FaceTime. And so I went in and, and met them and said hi on camera, but he just keeps it, keeps it, uh, the camera set up there. Mm -hmm. on his end and then the kids do too so he helps them with homework that's you know, they cute. Just hang, that's hang really out. Cute. yeah it's it's a great way to do it so hence i do that now too especially sunday mornings um always yeah. i have breakfast yeah. with them and then watch the kids play and all of that that is really cute i've never done that but i have my parents now live in utah but they used to live in california and and uh in, in our church we have family family night on mondays and so sometimes we would have uh, they would just, I could literally set the phone down and I would yeah. participate in family night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, that, 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 so. That's a great way to keep families together yeah. when it's, yeah. when it, we're all so busy anymore. That's we're really busy. Cool. Yeah. Well, so let's dive into Chesapeake Shores. I, I'm really interested. I'm glad to hear you say that they are going to elaborate on Megan's character because yeah. I feel like it's always been a little bit unclear as far as, because I feel like it would take a lot of motivation for a woman with five children to leave her family. I feel like, right. th and, and I, I mean, that's just not like a, that's, that's a pretty, pretty strong thing to do. Uh, and I don't know. So I was going to ask you, why do you think, what was her main motivation for, for, for doing that? Do you, how do you feel about that? About I, her decision? I don't want to reveal too much because we actually, right. We reveal a lot of that in, in this, oh, but just know that it was out of love and uh -huh. of trying to save the kids. Um, I've, I've had something similar. Again, I was married to a narcissist at one point and, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of escaped and didn't feel like I was worthy. My, my self-esteem was so low, but I chose to, you know, I could have, at least even for a while left Jessica there uh -huh. because because I left him the home the car the everything her friends and everything and went on this crazy acting journey so I just think it's one split second you try and do what was better like like if Megan didn't have money how would she take those kids away from this ideal life remember Abby was in high school she wouldn't have wanted to leave her friends and go move someplace and then right and then and then how do you compete when the nail, this perfect nail, who everybody loves, comes into the mix. It's, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I know she's to blame too, but I, she chose what she did, trying to make the best decision. Yeah. For, for her kids, and you'll, you'll learn a lot more about that. Oh, I'm really excited for that. Yeah. I, yeah, because I, I, I think Jess was, Jess and Connor were probably the ones that were the most affected. Right by this decision because they're the youngest yep and they didn't they didn't see what was going on all the fighting and things that, that were happening because they didn't they were too young mm -hmm. well and maybe they'll go into this as well but what was her motivation really for coming back uh was it just uh now getting sick or what was her no. motivation because well, I, from i know, I know yeah. the older the older that i get family is more and more important mm -hmm. and i just you know do you know how something gets so big and then you can't even if, if you're in an argument with a family member or something something gets so big how do you ever go over that how do you mm -hmm. ever reach back and take that all back but i just think that once you have grandchildren too things get into perspective and she's always kept in touch with megan and and would and has been helping with the grandkids because they they were all you know there um but i i i don't know I, I, I just, yeah. Interesting. I don't know. It is interesting. Yeah. There's no easy answer, but just, um, I, I know like, like I got this part because, uh, Bill Abbott called me and he's the president and CEO of, sure. Hall, yeah. of all crown media. And he called me one day at the end of Cedar Cove and said, I'm just reading these books and I, I see you as Megan. And, and, he, and he said, go, go get it. So I ordered Kindle online and, and read it. And I got excited as well because I said, I have to play her because yeah. I, I don't want her to come across as evil right. or as a big victim. 
I, she's, she's a strong woman and I don't want to make her unredeemable either. We all know what that, ha what happens with mm -hmm. that, but people make mistakes. And if you can't own up to your mistakes and try and make them better for everybody, I think she also was keenly aware of how that affected her older kids now in every way, finding love and jobs and everything. And yeah. it's time now to make things right. Let's see mm -hmm. how we can move forward as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I think one thing I like, uh, I, I feel like Chesapeake Shores feels like the kind of show that Aaron Spelling would have produced. Oh, I love that because Aaron was one of my mentors. Did you know that? Oh, that's I great. loved him. I did, I did so many shows for him, Charmed and yeah. And he, oh my, oh, and I we used to go over to his house. My, my ex David and I would go over to his house. So I've actually seen um, like the bowling alley and all of that. And Aaron was just such a gentleman and he, he just always kept his eye out for me. His morals were so high and he would, he would always give me advice. Like, like if somebody would, would ask me out, you know, when I was di divorced and right. And he would say, no, you watch out for him. And when I got, when I got the role playing Marilyn in the Rat Pack, he sent me a note and a huge bouquet of flowers says, you watch out for those Kennedy men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But there's something about this kind of show that, I don't know, I just feel like that kind of entertainment, you don't see very much that there's always the, uh, there's always sort of the desire to make it either sexier and not that he didn't have sexy shows but i don't know there's just a desire to make it more of to more edgy i feel like that's kind yeah. of the thing now and it is yeah. really nice it feels it just feels like a throwback to me to shows like party of five and yeah. Seven heaven and oh, yes. things like that yeah i think aaron would be proud of this i mean we all watched yeah. because um remember dynasty and all of those you yeah know, aspirational Mm -hmm. um, definitely aspirational, but just, you know, and it, again, it just shows that people, no matter how much money they have, no matter where they come from or what race, religion, mm -hmm. we're all dealing with the same things, the same, mm -hmm. it's about love and it's about life and it's about trying to find your place and living yeah. your purpose. How on the set are you guys able to make all of these people from all these different backgrounds kind of feel like a family? Uh, I mean, you have Amelia who's from Denmark, right? Yep. Oh, but yeah. she, yes, yes. In fact, <laughs> she's, uh, she's in Denmark right now, I think visiting her family, which is great. Yeah. Um, but, but we, because we're all on the island away from our family, mm. most of us, Interesting. Um, we, we become a family. Um, yeah. and what's great this year, cause Megan had her baby and, uh -huh. um, and, uh, so she had, it was called his trailer, not her trailer, the baby's trailer. <laughs> and often we were um, parked so our doors would just about match up, right? And so I come back to my trailer, and if hers was open and the baby was in, I'm in there, you know, because so we all got yeah. baby time. And I, I get to be called honorary Mimi. So, um, but we just, we watch out for each other and we all respect each other's craft and acting. Uh -huh. um, th this year, everybody stepped up their game. For acting, um, oh, great. they really found they really found my character Megan's voice this year too. Oh, that's I feel great. like I feel like, as you said, they kind of just minced around. They I don't know if they knew how to deal with it correctly mm -hmm. um, before, but this year they did. Oh, that's great news. We, we're going to explore a lot, a lot more with Mick and Megan too. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. Are we going to get uh, any? Um, Romance for, for Megan? I'm, tell, I'm not telling. <laughs> All right. Good, good. That's yeah. really, really good. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where all the characters go. Connor is my favorite, but I will be really disappointed if he goes back to that corporate job. So that's my only like, don't do it. Don't do it, Connor. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but, um, I mean, yeah, and that's that's really cool. Do you know how many episodes that we're getting this season? We did we did, we did ten. Ten. Okay. Cool. Ten. Yep. Good. Yep. Over and we shot about a little over three and a half months to yeah. get that ten. So is that so? Is it interesting working because Treat Williams, he's such a veteran. Yep. And uh, so that's got to be interesting and great to work with him. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it, it is. He's such a pro. Uh huh. Yep. Cool. That's great. 
Well, um, we like to end our interview with just some silly questions. Uh, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, okay. Just indulge us. We call these yeah. the teens. I wish everybody could see your cute, silly t-shirt right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so well, cute. Because I, so I have Applejack uh, from my little pony on because I'm actually interviewing Andrew after, after this. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and he's on my little pony. So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, he is, he's like a Pied Piper with all the kids too. He's, oh, he's really? such a great guy. Yeah. We, I, we all kind of are like our characters, I think. Um, <laughs> oh, really? I, I think a lot. Yeah. That's I, cool. I, yeah. I have, I have a bit of a crush on Andrew Francis. This is, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, you know, he's, he's really spiritual too. I don't know. Oh um, yeah. Like, like I brought my singing bowls and my, um, my drum that I have and, and he does the same thing. He, um, oh. and he opened up a company called Zenden in Vancouver. So he, he teaches meditation and leads uh drum circles and all of that so if you ever get up there go to zenden Ooh, up there. cool yeah. Yeah. yeah well all right so we call these the team beat questions because that was like a old magazine team i remember team beat. okay yeah. yeah so all right first question best ice cream flavor i don't like ice cream that much i like all this stuff in it so okay. with with chocolate crunchy and hot fudge and then syrup on top and all of that <laughs> stuff in there that's that so ice cream doesn't matter but just all the stuff you put oh, on oh you're more of a candy person yeah i guess <laughs> okay. there you go all right favorite color red nice uh that's very on brand I, yeah Christmas. except i like i like to wear black because it makes me feel skinnier okay good all right uh so uh what music is your favorite right now country music nice. although i love rachel yamagata i like I, i'm oh. weird I like it all i like uh, reggae i like world music it just, just depends on on my mood so i actually do cool. it all because it, it, it flavors your life depending on where you are yeah i've been obsessed with the mamma mia 2 soundtrack lately oh i did you see the movie i haven't yeah. seen it yet it's delightful but i'd say that the movie is super fun super just effervescent and bubbly and silly but the soundtrack is even better <laughs> awesome i'm gonna go order it right now it's really good uh so okay what is your go-to date night food well since i'm not really dating i'm date nighting by myself <laughs> wine wine <laughs> and anything salty and savory i'm not i'm not a sweet person hence i that probably why i don't like ice cream that much but uh -huh. I could live on bread and cheese and, oh, and anything man. salty. And then with wine. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, so simple. what is your go-to date night activity? What do you think is fun? Uh, Even to do on a date by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my, my favorite thing in the whole world is to sit on the couch with all my animals around me oh. and, the, and then watch something. And I, I, that's my favorite. I have my grandkids over and we do the same thing. So. I, I'm, a, I'm a real homebody, so yeah. I do everything I can to not have to go out of where I live. Yeah. Hence, when I, when I go to, uh, everybody laughs, and they're also aghast. I travel up there with nine suitcases and a guitar and my <laughs> drum and my carry-on stuff with my computer because I, yeah. I'm somebody, I'm, I nest. I bring up my own coffee maker, my, my uh, kitchen items, my walk, um, all my Nutrisystem because I always – I always stay on Nutrisystem as uh -huh. my normal because I, right. I have to watch my weight because I'm acting. And right. then just have my stuff around. I've got all my, I bring all my crystals. I bring Tibetan singing bowls and I just make wow. it a sanctuary, my, my room where I am. Cool. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Uh, but then I have to unpack it and haul <laughs> it all back when I get here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not a huge traveler either. I mean, I take the advantage of the opportunity comes because I know it's good and I know I will enjoy it, but uh, but I don't know for this. I'm, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I, I like to either be home. I like to be at the beach or at Disneyland. That's the, that's the oh, only, yeah. That's those those are pretty to. good. Those are pretty good. Yeah. Oh, and my other favorite food is sushi. sushi. Oh, okay. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so this one will be difficult for you, but dogs or cats? I have both right now. Uh -huh, so. um, do I've always been dogs. Uh -huh. um, but I just, I just adopted two uh, kittens Yeah. Uh, because they, they, 
they're rescued feral kittens. Uh -huh. And I saw them online while I was filming Chesapeake and I contacted the lady and said, and cause it looked just like Bammer, my cat who passed oh. away three years ago, looked exactly like him. And, um, and in my backyard, I've created a, I guess I'm spiritual, I, but I created a sanctuary. I call it a love memory garden. Uh -huh. So, and I, and I named it Bammer's garden because after Aww. he passed, I got a sign yeah. and everything, but um, I have a, a huge grapefruit tree with a, a park bench under it and a little bistro table and chairs. And then I've got like a, a memory stone for my dad, one for my mother and the wind chimes completely throughout the tree with, with solar lights. And it's just, it's so peaceful. So that's, that's what I do. But so I've got um, aging dogs right now. Um, uh -huh. I'm an ethical ambassador for American Humane and, oh, wow. um, and really, um, advocate for adopting instead of shopping, but uh -huh. also adopting um, senior pets because they uh -huh. need us so much and they're the ones that will, you know, have the hardest time getting adopted in a shelter. Oh, yeah. So I've got two right now. I have a nine-year-old uh, little chihuahua who's pretty chunky. We've got her on a diet along with me um, named Maggie. <laughs> and then I've got a, a, a just a love dog, a chihuahua who's 16 and a half named Pepper, who's in renal oh, failure wow. now. But he's, He's still hanging in there and we, we do sub key fluids on him every day and, and he's still just a fighter. So I figured we, I've lost three beloved pets over the last two years and mm -hmm. I thought we need some kittens around here. So well, we I'll let you kitten pick. energy. Yeah. I definitely, I'll let you pick both then for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So next question is beaches or mountains? Wow. Two totally separate feelings. Yeah. <laughs> How about Chesapeake Shores where you have beaches and mountains? Yeah. Hey, there you go. That's fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love, I love the water. I love yeah. the water, but I, yes, I love the, the other water. thing I should say is that I grew up in Maryland, so I've been to the Chesapeake Shores. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The real Chesapeake Shores, not in, in uh, Canada. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, in fact, <laughs> when I was, um, when I was in middle school, there was a, <laughs> this is the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, they, uh, they had this contest that only like maybe a dozen kids in the whole middle school could get to go on this canoeing trip on Chesapeake Bay. And of course I, everybody was super excited and I entered to win and I love anything with the water. I'm just a huge uh -huh. water person. And it was just really funny experience because it was a total disaster. The trip was just oh, no. there. We got like lost. Our tour, our guide had no idea what was going on. It was, we were wet and it was like, oh, first oh, prize so to win. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, but, but it's still, too bad you didn't have a video camera on it. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I, I still have positive thoughts about the Chesapeake Shores, even after that traumatic experience. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, all right. Uh, fancy dress or sweats? Sweats. Sweats, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, if people, people who know me know that um, they get me as, as I am. I don't wear makeup unless I'm filming or, yeah. you know, have to be on or something. Um, I'm, I'm just really, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty normal. I'm so normal. So yeah, yeah I, that's that, so that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The pretty much the only people who pick fancy dress are like the young ones. Like we had Lila yeah. Fitzgerald on and she was like fancy dress. I want a princess all the time. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah. That's so, cute. Uh, so favorite holiday. Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's yep. tough to beat Christmas, especially with Hallmark. Yep. And yep. so the last one is a tough one and you can pick one that you've been in. That's no problem. I, we have favorite Hallmark movie. Wow. There's a lot of them. That <laughs> I, I know. There's so many, <laughs> you know, I don't know because, um, I honestly, I don't have a favorite. I, uh -huh. I'm, I think I'm kind of the quintessential Hallmark viewer because during Christmas I, I watch it. It's just on all the time in the yeah. background because it, it lifts me up. It makes Christmas. Hallmark now having the Hallmark channel on with their Christmas movies is it creates my hall, my, my Christmas. Yeah. Um, although I'm not into Christmas in July so much. I don't right. know why I know people are. And I think it's because I'm, I'm working on Vancouver Island the whole time and I don't get Hallmark there. 
Can right. you believe we don't get Hallmark up there? Um, I know. So that, yeah. But um, as soon as it starts, I'm in there. And I can't really say a, a favorite movie. Well, that's all right. We can accept. We will accept that. Yeah. I'm excited to watch. Um, uh, see, because I know some of the stars now, they become friends. I know that there's a, a new one um, that uh, Catherine Bell is going to be in. I think it's she's yeah, in. this weekend. Oh, is it this weekend? Yeah. She's awesome. Do you know we started out in acting class together? Um, uh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. So just so she deserves every bit of her success. She's, she's a wonderful person and just worked really hard at acting too. Oh, so, that's, and so cool. again, I love her. I love the good too. way. Yeah. Oh, me too. And you know, she again is somebody, so you can't just wait for your dream to happen. You've got to make it happen. So um, let me just tell you a, a quick story on her, how she got that part on Jack. Do you remember she got Jack? Remember she was doing that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So she, she did a guest star on it or did a, a small part on it. And then our teacher, Melton Katsellas, our acting coach, always told us that you have to go to the nth degree. If you want something, you, you just go until you, you can't go anymore and then it'll happen or not and just bless and release it. So uh -huh. what she did, she wrote um, Belisarius, who was the executive producer, and came up with the character that we, I, you need to bring me back to do this because I, I will, um, she, she made this whole thing up and he ended up doing it. Oh, that's so cool. So, yes. Huh. So she deserves her success. Yep. Yeah. I, she just, I don't know. I just, I've always, I liked her in army wives. I've just always yep. been a big fan. Yep. And we got to interview Catherine Disher from the good wish. Who was, we've interviewed her twice and she was <laughs> the best. And so yep. anyway, so great. Uh, and, uh, so thank you so much. That's the end of the questions and you've just been a delight and I, I hope we can have you on again, maybe towards the end of the, the season and Amber can be here and that'd be really I would fun. love it. I'd love it. It'd be my honor. So <laughs> can I just say a shout out please to all of you Chessies? Um, to, thank you for watching so much. And you know, if, if, you, if you know me, that I tweet live with you at, at the East Coast showing and then again at the West Coast showing every time that we air. So I hope to see you on Sunday nights. We premiere August 5th. And then every Sunday night after that, please join us on Twitter and just join the conversation by using hashtag Chessies or hashtag Chesapeake Shores. And then also one more shout out to my dear FOBN, fans of Barbara Niven, because you guys have been with me through thick and thin all these years and oh. you have no idea how much it means to me for your support through all the all the ups and downs that i've had thank you for your support i love you so much that's so amazing definitely and uh, do you have social media that you want to share or? oh yes yes um please join me on facebook because i put a lot of uh, behind the scenes uh videos and pictures both on Facebook and on Twitter. So my Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Barbara Niven. And then on Twitter, I'm at Barbara Niven. Great. And you can find me on Instagram as well. Great. Well, we'll have that all in the uh, description section and you guys can check it out. And uh, you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. And also make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod on Instagram, Twitter. We definitely try to live tweet all of the, you know, the movies and the shows. We'll be doing a weekly show on Thursdays on the, uh, we're going to call it Chesapeake Chats. Or Yay. What we're talking about <laughs> the 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 just be shores each week, and it's going to be really fun. We've done it with Good Witch, and we did it with A One Calls the Heart, so we're really looking forward to that. And so, lots of good stuff uh, coming up for us. So please follow us, and uh, if you can put in your reviews on iTunes uh, for the uh, podcast, we really appreciate it because then more people can find us. So, oh, thank thanks. you, thanks can, so can much. I, can I say one last thing please. to you? You know, we've been talking about dreams here on, on this thing. And I just want to say, if there's something that you are called to do, if your spirit is saying, like tapping you on the shoulder, saying, you know what? I think you're going to find your purpose by following your goosebumps. So please do it. And yes. don't settle for less than wonderful in your life. And don't give up five minutes before the miracle because you can yes. make it happen. Love it. That's wonderful definitely and uh yeah and let us know let us know your uh, uh what do you call it goosebumps goosebumps 
goosebumps. Yep, let us know. Your goosebumps. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, it takes a lot of work, but it is, it, I think the things that you still love, even if they take up your whole day, that's how you know you really love them. Yeah. If whatever you would pay someone else to let you do, that's the goosebumps. Yeah. Follow them. <laughs> Right. Very good. Well, great. Well, thanks again. We'll definitely have you on again and uh, good luck with the new season. We'll be excited to, I'm so excited to see it. Thank you. Can't wait. We'll see you Sunday. Okay. Bye.